What is up? Ever wondered what a content addressed storage is? Well, I have some good news because I am releasing my private Patreon series uh, where we build a complete decentralized distributed um, file storage, content addressed file storage, um, completely for free here on my YouTube channel. Right? It's about 17 episodes. I think it's around eight hours of content, uh, all divided in these specific, specific uh, topics. And we're going to build this completely from scratch without any library in Golang, right? We're gonna build a peer-to-peer -peer library from scratch. We're gonna build, we're gonna do everything ourselves, guys, right? So uh, I'm going to release the first video right now. And, um, but before, 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 guys, if you like the content I'm providing to you, please consider subscribing to my channel. Leave some questions in the comments and jump into the Discord community. Very important, if you have questions, jump into the Discord community. All the links are down below. Shameless self-plug, I also have the full-time Godev also in the link check it out if that is something for you right so um basically what i also want to ask you this is basically the first episode it's going to be 45 minutes but i was planning to basically get all these episodes together into one giant uh blob of video uh, containing all the episodes in at once right so i'm not quite sure what's the best thing to do here do you want me do you prefer to give me these to give you these um specific videos uh one by one or do i need to basically merge them together so you only need to press one button and that's the play button but also the subscribe to my channel button right so i wish you the best uh, and if you have any questions leave them in the comment jump into the discord community good luck love you all <clears throat> boot up vs code not gonna lie i think we're gonna first of all first of all let's start with the basics we're gonna make a main go file I'm gonna say package main. What's going on here? Like this, and then I say func main, so we can actually test things. Man, I need to warm up. Not gonna lie. Uh, func main. I'm gonna say fmt print ln. I'm gonna say we Gucci. Like this, and then we also. What is this fmt doing? Whatever. It is what it is. Sometimes the compiler cannot follow. We're gonna say a new folder. Actually, maybe we should make a make file first, right? Uh, a make file, we're gonna say go, we're gonna say build. Uh, output is gonna be bin fs maybe, forever store, like this. And we're gonna say run, which always will do a build. And then we're gonna say dot slash bin fs. And maybe of course testing. And that's gonna be go test the whole shebang. Uh, and maybe minus for boss, right? You could also do dash dash race here, but I don't know. Um, cool. Okay. Is this working? Make run. Uh, uh, what's going on here? Go build. <coughs> go mod. Oh yeah, I see. Uh, maybe you should do go mod. In it, can we do this? GitHub, um, com, and yam, forever store. Uh, we Gucci, okay. And I'm gonna do this. Um, I'm gonna place at so we don't have these uh, outputs in our um, terminale. Make run. We Gucci. All right. So we are ready to get this party started. So I think we're gonna make our peer-to-peer uh, -peer lab first. Or maybe we switch things up and then we can go over to our disk uh, storage, which is basically what, what, what I think is going to happen is we just um, going to send a file. We're going to hash that file, uh, just a hash, a simple hash. So we can have a, a nice key. We're going to use the hash as a key. Then we're going to add some kind of an interface func to transform uh, the key, to transform the, the hashed file name. Yeah. And then uh, we're gonna make these subfolders just like Git does. We're gonna make these subfolders, bam, 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 bam. Uh, maybe in pairs of two, store the actual encrypted data somewhere there. And then we can have a, a nice way to uh, do versioning of these files. Maybe we, I don't know, versioning um, and all that good stuff, right? That's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna do a lot of uh, working with readers, writers, uh, read closers, and all that, that good stuff. We're even gonna make a cache and an index system and all that beautiful stuff, man. It's, it's insane. 
Um, but first, but first, but first things first, of course, uh, let's close this file and maybe let's close main. We are going to make, we have this bin, we're going to make a new folder that's going to be peer to peer, all right? And in peer to peer, I'm gonna make a new file. Maybe I can call this transport.go package peer to peer because we're gonna make things very uh, generic, right? Um, like it was a real library. So I think uh, maybe we should first do TCP and then we can actually see what kind of things we need to do for our interface, not quite sure. <coughs> or maybe we can do something like type uh, peer, which is gonna be an interface uh, like this. Of course, uh, and then we could have something like a type transport interface. All right, I could say uh, transport is anything that um, is anything that handles the communication communication uh, between remote no between nodes between the nodes. Uh, in the network yeah and for for a document uh, if you're writing documentation on your functions you should always start with um, this word should be the first word here right and then we could say something like peer is peer represents actually peer is anything of no peer is an interface that represents the remote node, right? That's what a peer is, right? A lot of people don't know, but a peer is basically just the remote node. It's a representation of the remote node, of the remote connection, of the the dude or the girl that is dialing us or the dude or the girl we are connecting to. So of course these interfaces are actually um, empty for now. Uh, so basically, uh, transport is, is, is anything that handles the communication between nodes in the network. This uh, can be of the form TCP, UDP, WebSockets. Right, gonna make some documentation. Maybe we'll make it better. I don't know. Um, it is what it is. But I'm teaching you best practices, right? Okay, so what I'm gonna do is real quick, uh, start with the TCP, because I think if we have the TCP right, we can uh, derive what kind of uh, interfaces, functions we need to have, we need to implement, and um, yeah. Yeah, uh, it's gonna be TCP, wait, it should be TCP and then transport, right? And you see where, where this is going, right? You could make your UDP transport and whatever transport you want, right? Uh, in separate files, uh, as long as they implement the transport interface. And actually maybe transporter interface should be better. But I don't think it makes sense. Uh, in Golang, they want you to make interfaces, right? But, I mean, why is interface not interfacer then? Hey. Anyway, uh, we're gonna say type. <clears throat> Can you please close this? Yes. It's going to be type TCP transport. It's going to be a strict. Uh, I think is that we need to be very careful so we can actually have something that we can implement in all our other projects. So we need to we need to engineer this like a boss, right? TCP transport. Um, man, that's a good good idea. A good thing. What what are we going to? I think we need to have a listen adder. Actually, <clears throat> no, I'm gonna start. I thought was I thought making some configuration for this uh, configuration. Uh, listen address, and that's going to be a string. Maybe you want a listener, and that should be a net listener, which is an interface. Listener, listener, yeah. 
and I think the transport should be responsible for holding its peers, right? So we could do... Actually, this listener, I don't like that it's... I'm gonna make everything private. For now, and we will see. If we need to make something public, we will check how. Uh, but I think starting with everything private makes a lot of sense. Uh, peers, that's going to be a map of a uh, peer, right? It's an interface. No, not peer, it's gonna be a map of string. And maybe we should make our own type for this. Um, we could use a net other like this. Actually, that makes a lot of sense to be honest to use this. Um, that makes a lot of sense and we will see. But it's not going to be the address. I'm trying to think out loud, right? Uh, I think you... Ben that's good that will benefit you more than just copy pasting stuff uh, let's start with a net adder we will see we will see uh, because a net adder if we open this it's basically nothing more than network and string right it's 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 a super easy interface to use and it makes a lot of sense so uh, gd right you need to do gd and you're here if you use the vim <laughs> plugin um, peers map adder and then we're going to say it's going to be a peer right and if we open up our uh, normal transport thingy you see peer is going to be an interface that represents the remote node right so it's going to be this and we need to have um, an emu right and a mutex and i think you could call it emu but maybe a peer lock actually let, we're going to call it emu it doesn't really matter we will see because if you have different mutexes, how are you going to handle that, right? Uh, that's going to be a sync uh, RW mutex, right? And you see how you need to group things, right? Because we have this map and we have this mutex, right? And that basically means it's a common practice in Golang that you do this, uh, that you put your mutex above the thing you want to protect it. So we can see, oh, this mutex will protect the peers, right? Uh, that's good. Then we're gonna say func new TCP transport uh, It's gonna be a list adder like this gonna be a string. Should it be a net adder or are we gonna create one? Hmm good question. And that's gonna return we, we have a couple options. We could return a TCP transport like this, right? And then say return um, TCP transport and say that the listen address is basically the listen address we give it like this right uh, but we can also say we can also make this actually a little bit more convenient and say hey this is going to be a transport right of course if you're testing this if you make a test right let's say you have a test here funk test test things uh the problem is of course that if you want to test this thing and you say for example uh t transport t is going to be a new tcp transport like this right and you give this an address like i don't know could be anything the problem is you cannot say t listener right you see it, it, it doesn't work because yeah even though you need to cast this to uh, a tcp transport like this and then it's gonna work right except you see Decisions you need to be make uh, that need to be made and I want to show you this kind of stuff because uh, Yeah, it's a little bit advanced and like I said Patreons you're gonna learn in-depth stuff, right? Very important stuff that will make the difference between a decent engineer and basically You know what I mean? Uh, you are the double weight you are the double the double champion or you're the double division champion, right? Conor McGregor. You know what I mean? The best of the best. That's what I'm going to teach you. So that's the thing. Uh, in my opinion, I'm going to try to keep the TCP transport like this. Uh, because it doesn't matter. In my opinion. I just want to show you these things. Because sometimes people are returning the, the interface. Right? Cool. So, uh, we have this. Then I think we need to have something... Um, 
you know what let's let's uh, try to do this in um, in a TCP transport TCP transport test something like this and let's open up let's let's open up uh, test here and then the transports TCP here so we can do stuff right we're gonna say package peer-to-peer uh, -peer. I'm gonna say func test TCP transport just to do stuff uh, T is gonna be testing <coughs> T right so let's save this real quick yeah so we're gonna say for example um, TR is going to be a new TCP transport and we're gonna say the address is going to be for example we could say that the uh, listen address is going to be uh, 3000 or 4000 I'm going to say okay listen address and then we could do something like um, wait let me first to go we're going to use this for our tests go get getup.com I think it's a stretcher and then test the pi and can I do something like assert equal t tr listen address listen address no we can't because if you're designing libraries and such or you're making production systems that's actually what, uh, what we're going to do we're going to make this as if this was a production system for one of your clients that are going to pay you a lot of money to build this so i need to teach you exactly how to make this quality code right quality it's going to take a little bit longer but hey it is what it is um so we're going to say uh, get up i'm going to check if, if we imported this package actually uh, get up com stretcher not quite sure if this stretcher and then testify and i think assert man what's going on yes it's working <laughs> i use this package so so many times in my life that i know it on the top of my head uh, all right and then we can actually run this test like this and then uh, everything is passing of course right but just want to make the point so we could do something like if we have a transport we should say a, a start function or an accept function depends on how a server is willing to use this so let's say we have um, for example this is our server right uh, how would you use this we're going to say for example tr accept or or is accept already called by saying tr start right some things we need to we need to take in consideration so let's say um so what what does a transport always do a transport always listens and accepts right it lists listen and accept that's why uh i think maybe a function transport tcp transport we could say listen and accept something like this and then we could say or a listener error is going to be net listen tcp t listen address what the hell is going on here yes code a little bit too enthusiastic uh t listener it's not going to be it's going to be t listen address so we already know that we have an error here right so we're going to say if the error uh is not nil we need to return this so i think a listen and accept should return an error at all cases <coughs> so we can actually return this error and then we could say tln equals listener listener equals ln like this or you could do for example say var uh, like this and say add error and then um, yeah or actually because it's only one and then could say something like t listener man this listen address man t listener r and then relieve the column that could actually also work <coughs> depends 
All right, so we have this listen and accept, which is uh, muy bien. And then we need to start up uh, an accept loop. But yes, this is going to return the error. So we could say maybe a private function, TCP, to make it cleaner, TCP transports. Uh, we could say something like accept loop. Like this. And say for T listener. It's going to be this. It's going to accept, right? So we need to listen. Wait. This is a connection error. It's going to be T accept. If there is an error in the accept, we actually don't want to do anything for now. We could say FMT. Uh, print F. We could say. TCP trans TC TCP transport or actually TCP maybe TCP error accept error like this and then uh, we could do a percentage percentage S a new line of course and then say the error right and then we have a connection. Uh, what are we going to do with this connection? We're going to handle the com, I think. And then we could say accept loop. Go accept loop. I think we should say go start accept loop. And then we could say here go t start accept start accept loop. And then we could say return null here, right? And then we have a com. And then we could say make an other private function. And I'm going to make handle com here. It's very important if you're writing production code or very high quality code that you organize all your public functions at the top and your private functions at the bottom and always organize them based on how somebody would read it or based on the importance of a function, right? So if a function is more important, put it more above. And if it's just a simple helper function, uh, demote it to the bottom. Right, that makes a lot of sense because I don't want to scroll to a couple of string operation functions that basically makes no sense uh, for me to read. So, and I think here we could say something like uh, t tcp transports. We could say handle com, which is going to be a com net com, and handle com. Because we know that we're gonna call handle con in a go routine, so I don't think calling returning an error makes a lot of sense unless you're going to do some maybe a channel or something. But hey, <coughs> uh, um, so and then you could say we have our connection here, and then you could say go t handle con con and call it a day, right? And then it can keep looping and keep listening and uh, nice and tight, nice and tight function. And then here we could do for now, we could say FMT print F um, percentage plus V maybe a new line, the connection. And we could say, for example, um, new incoming connection right cool so yes yes so basically how it's gonna work is we have our transport which is a new tcp transport here and then we can say um tr we don't have anything to start this listen and accept listen listen and <laughs> accept Right, uh, so we could actually make test. Uh, 
this is an accept. Um, this we're gonna return an error, so we could say assert uh, assert nil t. Right, that should give us no error. Right. Um, let's run this test. So it's working fine, and we could also do something like, for example, if we do this and we run the test, then it's going to return an error because this is not a valid um, thing. So, hey, all good. Okay. So thing we already know, no matter what kind of transport we have, I think calling, listen and accept is always something that can work. So we can go to transport and we could say in our transport interface, we could say listen uh, and accept. And basically it does nothing, it returns an error. That's the only thing it needs to do. We don't care how or what this function is gonna do, it just needs to be listen and accept because uh, that's something we are gonna call in our server, right? And depending on what kind of transport we're gonna have, we're always gonna call listen and accept. If it's UDP, it needs to listen and accept UDP. If it's WebSockets, it needs to do that. If it's a local transport, I don't even care what kind of transport it is. It could be even a gRPC. Listen and accept could be make could make sense here right all right uh tcp transportos are we gonna see test okay so what we also gonna do is if we are handling the connection um uh, we need to basically the question rather is so are we going to decode encode are we on or, or encoder and decoder is going to be an interface also but where are we going to call this is that something that's on the server side or on the transport side or something in between right that's a thing um i think we're gonna make a peer we have this tcp transport that's here Let's make, I'm gonna, for now I'm gonna make it here. TCP peer. It's gonna be a struct. We're gonna have a connection. We're gonna say TCP peer represents, represents the, rem, the remote nodes over a TCP established. Uh, can we do connection? Yeah, 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 yeah. What's going on? Lost in salvation. Uh, TCPP represents the remote node over TCP established connection. Yeah. Con is going to be a net con. Uh, I think uh, because we learned our lessons in all our protocols uh, in the poker engine and in the and, and, and in the blockchain uh, shenanigans, we're going to say if this is an outbound peer, uh, which is a bool. Right? What is an outbound peer? If we if we say uh, TCP transport dial, right? And we dial to a peer, that's going to be an outbound peer. If we, if we make connection with that peer, it's gonna be an, an, an outbound. But if, so, if we accept and, and make a peer of the connection, that's going to be um, an inbound peer. Right, it, it makes a lot of sense. L like this, for example. Um, let, let's look. Let's let's make documentation. So basically, um, dial. Wait, eh? If we dial and accept. Wait, eh? Wait a minute. Uh, if we dial. If we dial a connection. outbound but if we accept and retrieve a connection ac is this correct accept if we accept and retrieve a connection it's going to be outbound false well right because that's going to be an inbounded peer i hope that makes sense um, could say con 
is the underlying connection of is the underlying connection of the peer. Yeah. Um, all right, all right, all right. Next thing we're gonna do is basically. Maybe make a constructor func new TCP peer. It's going to be a TCP peer or a peer, doesn't even matter. I'm gonna say return and TCP peer. Of course, if you make a new TCP peer, we're gonna say a connection, which is gonna be a net com. And we're also gonna say uh, if this is an outbound peer, then we can say com and outbound like this. Of course, uh, I prefer to do this. Although they have the same names, still uh, as verbose as possible is always a good thing because I, I think if you if you follow the blockchain from scratch, we already had some nasty issue by not um, providing the names uh, in, in a more verbose way. New TCP peer, so we're gonna make this peer, right? We're also gonna need to have some way to add peers. The question is, are we going to do this with a channel? I don't think so. Um, but we're going to have a channel to communicate, right? Because every kind of transport is going to have a channel to communicate. And we're gonna call that as, a, as, a, as an interface function. Um, handle connection, do we actually I think we're gonna need a peer here. Handle peer, uh, that, that's the thing. The question is where are we going to? Ha! Um. And look, I thought maybe we should do something like, let's create a peer. Right, you could say that the peer is going to be, in our case, a new TCP peer. We're gonna say the com, right? And then if we accept, it's going to be an outbound peer. So it's gonna be true. Or we could make the peer here. Not quite sure. Uh, probably gonna change this actually. We're gonna make a new peer, new incoming connection, and let's do this peer and let's see if this actually works. The question about this, we cannot block uh, for now. Actually, we can. We could do select like this, and then. Um, Or we should call this in main. We could say that the transport is going to be a peer-to-peer -peer new TCP transport. whatever, store, uh, slash peer-to-peer, -peer, I guess. For some reason, Visual, Visual Studio Code don't want to implement these things. Uh, 3000, like this. And then we're gonna say TR uh, is gonna be, let's say, log fatal start and accept. I'm quite sure what's going on here. Listen and accept. <coughs> yeah. Listen and accept. And uh, of course we're gonna, we need to block it right, real quick. Let's make run this. Uh, no, what's going on? 
Okay, of course, because it's not... Uh, yeah, 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 I see, I see. Um, let's do it like the traditional way, right? Uh, edge. Clear. Make it. All right, so we are doing this thing. Let me quickly do uh, Telnet. Uh, Telnet local host 3000. All right, so you see, we are connecting and we say a new incoming connection. So we already have, <laughs> easy. We are already doing TCP. <gasps> dopamine. Dopamine. You see that this gives me dopamine and it should give you too. Uh, okay, cool. This next step is working. So we have a new peer, that's fine. Um, uh, now we need to make a, 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 a very important uh, decision because I wanna make a handshake funk, which is going to be, look, uh, what we're gonna do. Uh, I think, because handshakes, do we, uh, some, some libraries need a handshake like our poker. And what, what's a handshake? A handshake basically means uh, you connect to me or I connect to you. It doesn't not really matter. We connect. And first of all, before we are going to accept you as a new peer, we're going to shake hands. And if this handshake is not good, we're going to drop the connection and say goodbye. Right? Um, so that's why I think in TCP, we're going to have something like what I call A handshaker. Or a TCP. Actually, the handshaker doesn't even... It, it, it can, no, no, I have an idea. It could be any handshaker. The handshaker could work over... Um, a handshaker is going to be a handshaker. And we could do something like this, new file, for example, and we could say this hand, shake, handshake.go, we could say package peer-to-peer -peer type uh, hand, hand <laughs> shaker interface. Uh, and that could be something like, is this correct? My spelling, hand, yeah. We could say handshake. Or, or maybe shake hands. Nah, handshake. And the question is, we're gonna return an error. Doesn't really even matter. It's gonna be hard, this handshake. Because we're gonna think about this, but the thing is, um, because I'm not quite sure. You see, you could do like a handshaker right here. Um, let's go to handshake, and let's say type <coughs> default hand. Uh, handshaker, man, my spelling. Default handshaker is going to be a strict. Do we need to make this a strict? Does it actually make sense? Because we could do something like. Uh, ah, that doesn't matter. We're going to make this. We could also do something like a type handshake funk which is going to be a funk of type error. Something like this. And I think that makes more sense because are we going to add stuff to this handshake? Are we going to have things inside of this structure? That's a good question. I don't think so. I can, I think we can do something like this. Make it even better. And say the handshake funk, right? 
and maybe we could do something like any could take an any I don't know to compare or something I have no clue and then in TCP transport wait handshake and we could say yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I, have, I have a good idea uh, we could say transport and this is going to be the handshake func handshake func right and this is going to be um, handshake func right and if we're going to construct this we're going to say the handshake func uh, the handshake func is going to be a func you could actually make this func somewhere else but for now we're going to make a knob func we're going to be func any error and say return null All right so it's basically doing nothing so we could do we could also do something like this right like like i said i'm going to teach you a lot of stuff so it's, it, it could be a little bit slower but i hope you you have something about it and let me know poke me uh, let me know what you think about these things should i go faster or should i explain these things you could also something do like this like a knob uh a knob hand shake funk which takes in an any we don't care and an error and we say <coughs> turn no right and then we could say instead of doing this here we could say yo this is a knob handshake funk we don't care right and if you really want to be cool you can do in the handshake you could say hey i'm going to provide my users with a knob handshake funk right so if they don't need a handshake, they could say, yo, oh man, I need to sneeze. Oh no. And I'm not going to cut this out. <laughs> I'm not going to go in this video to cut these things out. That's not my style. Man, everybody needs to sneeze. And this big light is shining in my eyes. Make it, it even worse. Uh, so you could say, handshake funk. Handshake funk is... I don't know. I don't know how to explain this. Because we need to uh, probably make this handshake funk a little bit better. And we're going to see how this is going to work. So let's say we have the connection. We have a peer, which is good. And then we could do... I have an idea. This handshake func is going to be, look, we're going to say something like this. If r equals uh, t handshake func with the connection, and if the error is not nil, actually, <laughs> I'm so sorry, but I'm, I'm going to be a perfectionist. Uh, shake hands shake hands is going to be a handshake funk so we're going to say t shake hands with the connection and if it's an error we're going to say because we're going to here do go handle connection so we can actually start a read loop right here and uh, we could say here con, no, not con, um, nr or decoder. Man, I have so so many good ideas. This is insane. <laughs> oh man, what you gonna do, guys? Listen, oh, we're only at 44 minutes and I wanna show so much stuff, man. We're gonna make this is gonna be, oh my goodness, I'm so excited. I have so much dopamine. You see, I did this maybe 1000 times in my life and I'm still getting so excited by making these these programs as cool to use it's crazy what is this why do i have an error unknown field yeah i know hey man let me let me be happy 
Is it is it possible? Compiler. Uh, handshake punk. We also gonna say um a, de a decoder. A decoder is going to be uh Should we call this decoder? It's gonna be a decoder. Or is this or is this too generic? Right? And then we could make look what we're gonna do guys, it's gonna be insane. Uh we're probably gonna say um encoding maybe. We're gonna call this encoding. We'll go and we're gonna call um peer to package peer to peer. And uh wait, I'm gonna what we're gonna do, I'm gonna stop this video. And I'm gonna record another one <laughs> directly after it. Isn't that amazing? Uh, we're gonna stop right here because uh, otherwise the video is gonna be too long. 45 minutes, I think it's perfect. Thanks for watching. And of course, uh, I'm probably gonna record a second video, which I'm gonna release uh, pretty soon after this. Um, yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, and thank you for, uh, much for the support. And this stuff is gonna be amazing. I can feel it. I'm so excited. I can't stop. I'm gonna keep coding. See you guys. Bye bye.